All right, so moving along. All right, so moving along, we're going to create the hands this time. So probably a good idea to see from maybe the top view. And then I'll have an uh, X-ray going on. All right, so same thing again. I'm just going to place it first. So I have one over there. This is going to be my shoulder. Duplicate it. That's going to be my elbow. Duplicate that. That would be my wrist. And duplicate that would be... Oops, duplicate that. And this would be the palm area. Now again, if you think the size is going to be too big, so just go to display, animation, and joint size, maybe 0 0.05. All right, so that I can start to put my fingers in. I'm going to duplicate this. I probably have to go and adjust that a bit more later on. But I'm just going to duplicate this for now and have three of them. That's for the little finger. I'm going to duplicate this. This is for my index finger. This is the middle one. This would be this guy and the little finger. Right? So as you can see, we have it placed over here. It's just that it's not placed in the right position. And we need to basically position it correctly right so let's place it there now for the fingers we have to move it as such so the idea is to make sure that these joints are more or less inside your oh, I have an extra one there more or less inside your model mesh So again, it doesn't have to be exactly perfect as long as it's somewhere around there, then it'd be quite okay. Um, again, if you think the size of these joints are a bit too big, please feel free to go and adjust them. Alright, so more or less you get it over there, you can go back to the outliner and you can start to rename all of these guys over here. So once we already place um, all of the joints for our hand, uh, it's best for us to go and rename every one of them. So this will be shoulder, elbow, wrist, then over here. This is oh I have two of them so this guy is like an deleted and this would be palm joint six is uh extra one so I'll delete that away so I'm not too sure why I went to go ahead and create some extra ones but if you don't need them you can just delete it away so joint seven here would be for my thumb so I'll call this as DHUMP thumb 1 then what I can do here is go ahead and copy this and paste it all around here so um, I just realized something a good idea is to because we're going to duplicate it over so what we should do is actually rename it like left shoulder left elbow so that would be better so be left elbow left wrist space so you can kind of skip this area for now I mean if you know what to do or you can just wait here and see me name all of these things okay I'm just gonna show you up to the thumb and then after that you should know what to do for the rest alright so I've gone ahead to rename all of this so we have the left thumb left index middle finger ring finger and uh, little finger alright so just like how we did for this guy, the idea now is you have to go and parent everybody 
and everyone you have to follow the shoulder so let's start off with one of the fingers first so thumb 3 will follow thumb 2 and thumb 2 will follow thumb 1 right and this guy will go to the palm right all you have to do is to do use your middle kick middle mouse button and move it over um, left index 2 will go to left index 1 left index 1 will go to left index and then same thing again will go to the palm so we'll do it for the rest of the fingers Right, so everything goes to the palm so as you can see the palm has five different hierarchies over here which are all your five fingers now notice this is different from how we do over here where the to put it in the analogy the hip boss is the belly the back's boss or leader is the hip and then the collarbone will follow the back neck will follow the collarbone but in this case thumb index finger middle ring and little other five fingers are of the same rank if you like to say so and all of them share the same boss or the same parent which is the left palm and of course the left palm will have follow the left wrist the left wrist will follow the left elbow and the left elbow will follow the left shoulder and then we create a hierarchy where the left shoulder will control everyone else from the bottom down all right so a little on we're going to connect this guy left shoulder to this collarbone area over here right but we'll do that later on all right so next is the legs so we're going to do the same thing again i have one over here it's going to be my maybe left leg then i'm just going to duplicate it put it at the knee put one over here that maybe ankle then i'm going to duplicate two more one foot and one maybe at the back over here Right, so we can place it along that way. Right, so next thing is you gotta take all of this guy and position them properly. So he would maybe go a bit there. Right. So next thing is we can start to rename some of this. So this is my left leg left knee left ankle left toe and lastly left foot right so the foot will follow the toe the toe follows the ankle ankle follows the knee knee follows the leg right and eventually this guy is going to follow not the root but um, the hip over here right I said the root will control everything okay so what we can start to do now before we actually start to mirror some of these joints over to the next side is to talk about something called the local rotational axis now before we actually do that let me create a layer over here I have one layer over here and I'm gonna put my model inside this layer Right, so I just have my joints over here so if you go to display transform display and local rotation axis here we can see that um, is the option where we can actually look for our local rotation axis of course we need to go ahead and select one of the roots or one of the joints first and then we're going to go to display and perhaps I'll put this inside my shelf here so when I place this thing called LRA or local rotational axis, I can start to see the orientation for all of my joints over here. So I'm just selecting everyone and I'm pressing G, which is to repeat last command to basically have a look at how everybody's joint is going. Now you might think that hey, this kind of looks quite neat. I mean everything's arranged well and everything looks nice and stuff, so I shouldn't have a problem over here, but that's not exactly right now even though everything is neat and tidy this is not the so-called correct orientation that a joint is supposed to have all right so the idea is to keep it very simple so that everyone can understand 
we want to have our x-axis wherever it may be to follow where the next joint or to point to where the next joint is so for example this root axis is connected his first child is the hip so the x of the root axis needs to point towards where the first child is which is the hip so it's not supposed to be pointing this way it's supposed to be pointing that way right so that's the first thing and then the z axis over here we can't have any of these z-axis to be pointing towards the back it has to naturally point forward it might slant a bit depending on how the joints are placed but you can't have it towards the other end the y will vary how it looks like and where it's positioned but the main idea is to have the x pointing towards the next direction right so let me just to show you uh, so that you can understand better let me just duplicate all this root I have so I have two of these guys over here one of them I'm going to leave it as such right and the other one I'm going to do the uh, local rotational axis changes so perhaps I'll do it for this guy over here now what we can do is we can select the first root first or any of these roots first and we can go to our skeleton and you can see this thing called orient join so I'm going to click on the option box now over here on the orient join I have this thing called primary axis and a secondary axis so my primary axis as I said I would have it to be X and then the secondary axis would be Z and then I would say there's this thing called secondary axis wall orientation so I'm gonna say that you follow Z and currently Z is pointing to the front which is positive so this is positive X this is negative X so I'm following my wall which is a positive X so I'm gonna put here positive and I will uncheck orange shell or selected object so I'll just do one at a time first so we can go ahead and click apply as you can see once we do that the X automatically changes to follow the place where the next the first child is so it kind of points towards that so I'll select this guy and I can just press G as you can see the X over here points toward the correct direction so let's do it for for all of these joints that I have G and then for this guy what we can do is if you press G it doesn't work if you apply this it doesn't work so what we can do is you can press Control A and then you can see over here under the skull there's this thing called joint orientation let's just zero out all of this right so you can see it kind of follows it as well okay so let me just minimize this for now now let's see what's the difference between these two over here right let's expand this out as well how we expanded the other one alright so what I can do now is I can select the hierarchies so basically I select from the top to the bottom I select the skull and I press shift all the way down to my root and I can start to move my z axis over here to maybe minus 20 right so can maybe I put minus 22 right to kind of see a better band over here and again I select this guy which is the wrong one and I'll do the same thing for him and put a minus 22 over there and what I can do now is I can snap the root oops let's make sure I did that properly just select the root and snap it to the same position as where the first guy's root is so let's look again this is the wrong one as you can see the X is not pointing towards the next direction and this is the correct one where the X are pointing to the right direction and as you can see that even though both of them have the same value of negative 22 for the Z axis one of them bends a bit nicer alright so you have a better bend a better curve as compared to the first one which can't really bend properly now I'm just only bending for about 22 degrees so imagine if you are doing a finger curl where you need to bend all the way towards the palm um, this guy can't really do that alright so that's the one of the reasons why we need to make sure that the X follows the correct direction alright so which is the first one over here where it follows all the way up well it's this one you can move it away now it kind of follows a world 
kind of rotation alright even though it looks neat and tidy we need to follow the X needs to follow to the next direction alright so I can go ahead and delete this guy and change this back to zero for everyone So that's the reason why we need to make sure that the X follows properly. So we have to do the same for the hand as well. So let's go ahead and make sure that the whole of this is displayed. Alright, so again what we can do is we select our joints, let's expand them. Right, let's do it one at a time first. So we'll go ahead and click this, go to our orange join. Same thing again, primary axis is X, secondary axis is sec, and I'm going to orient this guy. So changes a bit. Press G G and we're going to do for each of the fingers as well so for for this one is a bit confusing because he has quite a few of them to kind of like do I follow him do I follow him who do I follow so let's just leave it like that for now and for the palm so let's go back to the fingers and we'll do for each and every one of the fingers again the last one we can't really do that so we have to zero everyone out right so same thing here zero these guys out and this one as well Alright, so as you can see, it kind of works a bit better. So the idea is that when I select, let's say, this finger over here, and I want it to curl inside, it will curl nicely. Alright. So, we've done that one. Let's do for the legs as well. Right, so same thing again. We're going to go to our skeleton or in the join. Okay, and he's the last one, so let's throw him out. Alright, so we're more or less done for the local rotational axis, so we can turn it off again and in the next part we will go ahead and mirror some of these joints over and we have to we don't have to rename everything um, I'll show you a trick where we can just change the left to the right without having to rename them now we can start to bring some of these guys together alright and then we can start to do the controllers so that's the next part